on to our post-game show, watched in the studio alongside Thierry Henry, Jamie Carragher and Micah Richards. We've seen two cracking games tonight, one in Paris, PSG, with a late winner from none other than Kylian Mbappe. He scored the winner against Real Madrid and out in Lisbon, Manchester City scored five past Sporting Lisbon. We're going to break everything down from both of those games. You'll see every single goal as well. But let's just take you straight out to Paris. Guillaume Balaguet was pitch side. Guillaume, tell us, what was it like in the stadium when that late winner went in? There are some special nights where football says, right, who is the best? There was a debate, wasn't it, I'm sure, in the studio as well. And Mbappé has tried for 90 minutes to say, it's me, it's me, give me the ball, I'll do things with it. He actually had a couple of chances, but right when it matters, just before the game finished, he picked the ball and you could see the whole stadium standing up, holding the breath and thinking, Let's see what he can do. What he could do is actually score a winning goal that confirms what we've seen during the game, that PSG were clearly superior tonight. The game is what Pochettino had in his mind, not so much what Ancelotti had in his mind, but needed the confirmation of somebody, anybody. Messi, can you score a penalty? No. Well, then Mbappé, can you? Well, he could, and he's confirmed tonight, I think, that he's the best player in the world. Yeah, we've been talking about that in the studio as well. I think that the boys agree with you there as well, Guillaume. What did you think, Micah? Oh, certainly. Killian. I've been banging on about Killian for the last, what, two years now, Jamie? Since you've been on CBS? <laughs> Basically. <laughs> and it's about the moments as well in the big games. You can do all the skill, have all the flair, all the composure, but it's moments like this that define you to be in the top bracket. And to do it in the 93rd minute, outstanding. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. Guillaume, I can see that they're just setting up behind you there. Some of the players are going to come out to talk to you. Who are you hoping to speak to? Actually, yeah, we, we've got Courtois and uh, his English is perfect. He perhaps is not the happiest player right now, but uh, how did you feel the game went today? Yeah, I think not so good for us. Uh, although when you are 0-0 zero, zero till the 93rd minute or so, it's quite good but, uh, with the chances they had the penalty. But then to concede the silly goal in the end is hard to take. Uh, I think we lose the ball in midfield, really stupid. Uh, then I think Mbappé can go away too easy from two people and then I have bad luck that the ball just goes between my legs. So, uh, yeah, uh, unfortunate. I'm not sure this was the game that you imagined, that you had prepared. You didn't see Real Madrid coming past the halfway line often enough. That's not you. No, obviously it's not good. I don't think we had a shot on target today. So. Uh, I don't think that's good. Uh, I think for us it was hard to cope with their high pressure. Uh, we were maybe not too relaxed on the ball. Um, yeah. And then it was hard to find. If, if you want to play a good defensive, we have to be more clinical in the counter-attack and that we also weren't today. So we lost too many easy balls and then it's hard to, to get something out of the game. So a draw would have been good to go back to Bernabeu, although with a away rule, a draw would have meant that we had to win anyway at home. So now it will be the same thing. So uh, yeah, one nil. Uh, you know that uh, with two nil you go through. So uh, or two one you play extra time. So let's see. Uh, the most important is that we can defend like today, but we have to be better in attack. You already mentioned the away rule. Does that mean because your goals don't count for double that you come out a little bit more conservative, more not to risk so much? No, I don't think that uh, players think too much about it. I think uh, it's not also when you play with the way rule, it's not that you go crazy to find that goal because we're nil-nil, it's also OK. But, uh, uh, yeah, I just think that it doesn't change too much. Uh, uh, we know we have to We know we have to win. Thank you very much, Thibaut. Thank you. Good luck for the Thanks. second leg. So that's it. You can tell that um, Real Madrid are not happy with the performance today. It's still, though, it's only one goal separating the sides. Game, top stuff. I know you're going to try and catch a word with Kylian Mbappe, the goal scorer tonight. If you're struggling to get hold of him, just name drop Thierry Henry. I'm sure that they'll help you out if you do that. <laughs> Thierry, I want Thierry Henry here. <laughs> there you go, he's on his way. I'm sure he'll be on his way. Kylian, thanks for now. We'll be back with you very shortly. Thierry, what about that, though? That man, the man we talked about so much before the game, and he pops up with another late winner to save his side. In all fairness, I was never in doubt of he, uh, what he can do. In doubt of Paris Saint-Germain, yes. Uh, never in doubt also of what Real Madrid was going to offer uh, tonight. But when you have a player of that caliber, the guys will tell you, when you play like that, you just have to give him the ball. And he was asking for the ball and sometimes he didn't get it and you can see what he can do when he got it. 
but the way he went through the two players, the, the way he saw it before he happened, the way he finished it. Yes, we can say that Valverde touched the ball. I don't think Thibaut Courtois realized that Valverde touched the ball, but I'm talking about, hey, if you want to score a goal without a plan, it becomes a wish. This guy always has a plan, and he finished it. I mean, what a goal. Yes, the awareness of uh, Neymar when he receives the ball there. I'm sure Jamie will tell me something different than how Real Madrid defended that. <laughs> but, you know, when you are creative, when you have that vision, when you have that power, that skill, left, right, left, right to finish with your right. When I'm talking about left, right, the way he goes on his right foot to put power, to go back on his left, to go back on his right to finish it, and go in between the two players that didn't want to make a foul, obviously, uh, to, 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 to have another penalty. I mean, he did everything. He created the penalty, had all the chances, mm -hmm. and we knew, come on, we knew it could only happen because of Mbappe. The thing that I love tonight, and I've watched Mbappe doing this uh, coverage for the last couple of years, and he's had great moments at different times. The thing that stood out for me tonight was something that I was speaking about Neymar two years ago, when he took Paris Saint-Germain to the final. It was the responsibility show. We know the great players and they can do great things, but it looked tonight as if Mbappe thought, I am the man from minute one. And he always wanted the ball. And every time he got the ball, he was going for goal. He was making things happen. And that's one of the best performances I've ever seen from Mbappe. Mm. Not because of the brilliance at the end. We know he can do that. It was the responsibility he took and the maturity he took in that game. Whether it was because it was Real Madrid and there's talk of him going there, you know, in the future. But you see that run he makes from that left-hand side, inside channel between centre-back and full-back, almost gets on the score sheet early on. But he didn't stop. And again, it wasn't just his brilliance. There was a, there was a leadership about Mbappé tonight that I've not seen before. Mm. That's the thing that really impressed me. Before he got the goal, we were talking about how well he'd played because he was involved in everything. There he's through the centre. And he knows now the clock's ticking. Towards the end, he's on that side again where Thierry gets the ball. I keep talking about this Thierry on reposition he finds himself in, but gets the penalty. But again, there's nothing he's not involved in. We spoke about it being Kylian Mbappe v Real Madrid, and that's how it felt tonight. We've seen him on the left, we've seen him through the centre, we now see him on the right. He was everywhere tonight, and Mike, you must have been impressed with him. Uh, yeah, but it's more, I look at it from a defensive point of view. You know when he, he gets in these positions here, and it's, it's sometimes impossible to defend him because he can go both ways equally as good. He can push off his left, like Thierry says, push off his right, his composure in front of goal. And he's a team player as well. You said about the maturity. I've seen that in his game tonight. I, I've seen that for a while, but more so tonight. And I just think, as a right back, you come up, you think, well, which way can I show him? And I, I, there's no way he can show him because he'll run past you. He's got I, everything to his I game. I think he knows the clock. I, I think he knows the exact time there, how long to go. And he's thinking, I'm the only man who can do something tonight. He really is. I mean, Messi was not really at the races. Uh, Di Maria got brought off as well. Neymar came on and did OK. But I, I just think he had that mentality tonight. I'm going to have to win this game. Nobody else is going to. And when you think about top players, they do big things in big games at big moments. And that was exactly that. There is something that I want to add that you guys maybe don't know about. At the beginning of the season, because he didn't sign his new contract and he wanted to see it out, and he might have signed for everyone to think that he signed for, Real Madrid didn't come out and say it yet. He was getting booed. He was getting attacked in the press. He never said a word. He went on the field and worked. Mm -hmm. And he wanted to make this team his team. He could have said, you know what? I'm going to sign in January for a new team. I'm going to play, maybe walk. No, 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 no. He was always in training. He never was, you know, like, OK, you're having a go at me. I'm not coming back to training. I want to leave. No, he came, he played hard, and he gets his reward. And like you said, and I had also the opportunity. You had the opportunity to see Zeko. I went and see Kylian Mbappé, and I told him, that's your team. And that raised a few eyebrows when I said that, because they're like, hmm, that's a bit. That's his team. Everyone knows that. You don't have to be stupid to realise that's his team. But now, as you said, he's showing it all the yeah, time. Yeah, but if PSG play like that, would you not consider staying at PSG? You know what, what they're building there? Say a, a pop well, comes in the summer as, no as well. Chance. I don't, I don't, you know, it, it's, it's a tough one for me because you would, you, you know, being a Frenchman, you would like him to stay in the, in, in, in the league, in a team like that. But for me, if they wanted to secure Mbappe, they had to do it two years ago. They didn't show him the love. Yes. Now, another team did. We don't know who it is. 
Well, I don't think he will stay. Mbappé should not be playing in the French League. He's right to go at the end of the season. The problem for PSG is they paid so much money for him and he looks like he's going to leave on a free or whether mm. he signs a contract with a buyout clause <coughs> so Madrid have to pay some money and he does something to pacify PSG and the supporters. But players of that calibre shouldn't be playing in the French League. Neymar should never have named that move. Messi's made that move at the end of his career. Going to get financially looked after. Good luck to him. But a player at the actual peak of his powers should not be playing in the French League. And that's why he has to go to Real Madrid. We'll continue talking about this. But we've all calmed down a little bit now. It all got very <laughs> excitable in the studio when Mbappe <laughs> scored that goal. Let's take a look. <laughs> 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 Man, you know what I mean? I backed him since day one. <laughs> Honestly. Oh my wow. goodness me. That was, that was a good watching that back, wasn't <laughs> it? Was, and, the and look, off, the off. <laughs> they almost took the lead a lot before that when they had the best opportunity of the game at this stage, which was the penalty. Let's just take another look at the incident first of all and tell us. Thierry, what happened here? Well, the ball's going to arrive in a 1v1, obviously, with Carvajal and, uh, and Mbappé. There is no one in the box. Why would you commit? Someone must have told him, do not commit. Stay on your ground. This guy is too quick. You put your body in, your leg in, obviously. He doesn't have to jump over you. He runs into your leg, and it is a penalty. And the big man is going to step to take it. What does he do wrong here, Thierry? Or is it just a good save? Do we have to give credit I mean, to the You can always here? argue that he's not right in the bottom corner. You can give Thibaut Courtois credit because if Thibaut Courtois went the other way, everyone would have said, oh, composure for Messi. Mm -hmm. Send the keeper the other way and he puts the ball on the other side. I think that's a great save from, from Courtois. Yes, the ball could have been more in the corner from, from Messi, but that's a good save for me. What did you make of Messi's night overall? Shadow of us, of us for myself and uh, for me, the best player I've ever seen, one of the greatest players in, we've ever seen. But. No, he's just, he's doing something. I want to ask you about this theory. And I think about strikers I played with. And when you get to a certain age, it's difficult to hate teams in behind or being up against mm -hmm. defenders. Now, we, we know he played in that sort of false nine role. But even when he played in that false nine role and made it famous, he, he is the guy who made that position. He would still be really close to defenders, dragging people out of position. Here we saw Messi becoming a midfield player, really. And I always felt when I was playing, get, playing with strikers who were coming towards the end of their careers, it was they come deeper for the ball because they want touches. Because if they stay high up against the defenders, they're not going to get a touch. They haven't got the, the power or maybe the pace now to run in behind. Is that something you'd agree with, Tim? Is that something that maybe happened to you when you're coming to the, you know, your latter days as a striker? Maybe attacking players do come shorter for the ball because they yeah. can't hear people in behind. Well, I was still quick, but anyway. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> no, no, seriously, no, seriously, no, it does happen. And the first thing you do is you come in, in, in midfield and try to leak up with people, you know, and do one-two. You try to beat people with a one-two. And this is why when he plays with Argentina, it's a bit better because the, the team is structured around him. But you can't structure the team around him with Mbappe. Mm. Mbappe wants the ball. When Mbappe goes on the counter, if you don't follow him, that's on you. You know, he doesn't go on his pace. And that, that's why I think he does struggle. And, and if you're Pochettino now, Mbappe is winning you games. You know, when I was in Barcelona, Messi was winning, winning us games. I'm not, I wasn't going to go in, can, can we play for me? Yeah. You know? If his name wasn't Lionel Messi, Pochettino would have taken him off, 100%. You agree, Micah? Prob probably, I have to agree with, with Jamie on this one. He had eight shots today, only two on target, so, yeah, not his best night today. OK, not... Explosive! Kylian Mbappe has made it happen all by himself! Yeah, Kylian Mbappe, the star of the night, the difference maker in Paris. He got the goal that gave PSG the 1-0 victory over Real Madrid. He was in the spotlight all evening, but now I'm going to give Thierry Henri the spotlight because you speak the language of love. Kate Abdo is not here in the studio to translate this interview, so I'll let the floor be yours. kylian has been be, talking to be the press. First. That would be a first for me. Bear with me. We oui, oui, huh? Oui, oui. It'll be better than what Jamie would do. Of the match this soir, comment vous pouvez analyser votre performance? So it's been nice. Was it? How you analyze the game? Comme comme toute l'équipe, j'ai été dans le bon tempo du match. J'ai essayé d'aider mon équipe au maximum. Kylian is saying that it's been like the team has been in the right tempo throughout the whole game, trying to work hard offensively and defensively. 
vous avez manqué un petit peu de réalisme euh, au début du match. Qu'est-ce qui vous a manqué pour... Euh... C'est des détails, c'est des détails. Well, he couldn't score before, euh, he's been asked. Ça, a... And he said it's all about details. Courses, il faut rester lucide pour les occasions. He on made a lot of runs. Mais on a réussi à avoir ce léger avantage pour le match. He has to stay on focused to make sure that he could have scored that goal and, and be ready for the return leg. Justement. Je pense qu'on va tirer quelques leçons, mais pas beaucoup non plus, parce que ça va être un match complètement différent. Ça va être un autre contexte, une autre situation. Sorry, I'm listening. He's been asked, you know, what he can take of the game. He said the game in Bernabeu will be will be different, and yeah, they can't learn much from it. And uh, hopefully they can go there and win it and qualify. Boom! Yeah. Fantastic! Can I leave? No? Oh, oui, oui, oui. Oh, oui, oui. You can do it all, Thierry, eh? I don't know about um, it, but I tried. <laughs> Impressive night for him. Listen, this is, this is a type of player that, you know, the other, day, the, the other day I was talking to a friend of mine, and I will share that. I was like, not a lot of people make me jump out of my seat or make me scream like you saw before. You know, this is what you want to see. This is why you put your TV on, because you want to see people unlocking something. And I always go on about a 1v1. You know, all the time you have coaches will tell you, ball has to go there, ball has to go there, you have to put it back, switch it. What happened to instinct? What happened to 1v1? And this guy has plenty of it. Let him play, let us enjoy it. But what a night, what a goal, and I'm sure it won't be the last. No. Absolutely. League knockout stages here on CBS. Manchester City won tonight, PSG won as well. And Guillaume Balaguer has been talking to the winning manager in Paris, Maurizio Pochettino. It was surprising that uh, perhaps that Messi took the penalty, generally as Mbappé. Is that right? No, or? I think they, they decide. Um, Yes, uh, but for me, it's a thing that not to do. I am so happy with the performance of Leo. He, if, the, if the team play well, it's because he was so good today. Uh, yes, uh, we feel sorry for, for him because he deserved to score, but uh, no doubt uh, he's the best player in the world and he's going to give uh, um, happiness to the, to the fans because he, he has uh, unbelievable talent and, and great character. 90 minutes, after 90 minutes, you thinking, what a shame we're not scoring. Or you were hoping... No, I think, OK, uh, in the moment that uh, it's 90 minutes, uh, in this moment you need to be positive and say, OK, uh, we play well, uh, 90 minutes, we were better than Real Madrid. Why not to be better in, in three weeks, better than there in, in Madrid and, and with the game? Um, I think it's, it's about to build your present and, and your future, future. And of course, um, when you score, it's better. But I think I was uh, really pleased uh, in the same way. Uh, sorry, last one. Oh. Mbappé. Are uh, we saying now that he's the best in the world? Or what, what can we no, say? Mbappé is amazing. He's, he's a great talent. And um, after one year and a few months that I am here, I always talking in the same way. Uh, I cannot find more. Uh, words to praise him. It's amazing. It's a, it's a great talent. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Well, well, you can't see the smile behind Maurizio Pochettino's mask there, but you know he's smiling when he's talking about Mbappe, as we all have been tonight raving about him. On the other side of that, though, was a fairly negative Real Madrid performance, Jamie. Do you think that the abolishment of the away goal rule has anything to do with that? Maybe. I think we'll need more games and maybe look at the end of the competition and see how most teams react to playing away from home. We mm. see the, way, you know, the amount of goals Manchester City score, but that's, that's in their DNA, how they play. But I think getting rid of the away goals is one of the poorest decisions we've had. It really has. I got in touch with UEFA about it. Uh, the technical director, I think, is uh, Zvonimir Boban. And uh, we were exchanging messages over that. And I think you're giving me the eye. He's giving me the eye behind me, isn't he? <laughs> But I was that incensed about it because this is what made European football special and different to any other competition. Because all I think it brings now without the away goal is we get negative performances from away teams and we'll see more penalty shootouts. But what we had before was the away goal meant a team could go from winning a game to losing a game. Now, that couldn't happen at any other time in football, and it created so much tension and suspense in stadiums around Europe where we're all aware of the, the, the away goal and what one goal could do. And, and I just think we're going to lose that now, and I think we'll just see more penalty shootouts, and hopefully we don't see more teams play like Real Madrid did tonight. Maybe they would have played like that anyway, I don't know. But 
there's not that incentive to be a little bit more on the front foot away from home. And I think it's a really poor decision. Thibaut Courtois said in his interview earlier on that it didn't change the way they played. I wonder what Guillaume thinks. You did just see him over our shoulder there. Let's head back out to Paris now, Guillaume. Do you think that based on what you saw tonight and what Jamie's just said there, we might see a different approach from Real Madrid in the second leg? To be honest, I agree with Jamie. Uh, Courtois, as you said, was thinking differently. Uh, OK, if that's the case, if it doesn't have to do with the change of rule, then how do we explain what Real Madrid have done? And to be honest, listening to uh, Pochettino, it was PSG that made them play that way as well. Basically, uh, it was a very clear idea of uh, PSG to play the slow, attack together, and making sure that when they lost the ball, they were all there to recover it quickly. Have a look at the, uh, at the goal. It's um, Hazard and Cross who lose uh, possession. If, if those kind of players cannot build from the back, then it's very difficult for Real Madrid, but there is another gear to Real Madrid. There is another Real Madrid, I've got no doubt about that, that the Santiago Bernabéu will be different. That's why Pochettino started playing the next game, the return leg, when he was saying, we can go there and do the same. We are better than them. It will have to be uh, Santiago Bernabéu can actually make you really, really small. So still a very intriguing game. Yeah, and I know you're off to Milan now, aren't you, Guillaume? You're on your travels. You're going to go watch the Inter Milan against Liverpool game tomorrow. Quite a week for you on Valentine's week. Paris, then Milan. Not bad, eh? <laughs> on my own, Jules. Oh. <laughs> Bless him. Mm. Well, we'll catch up with you tomorrow, <laughs> Guillaume. Um, just a quick word about that game then, Jamie. How are you feeling ahead of it? Excited. I think that's the, the real big game of, uh, of the night, one of the biggest ones of, of this round. But Liverpool and I think Premier League teams now, when they come up against Italian teams, are, I think are strong favourites. Yeah. And just, wa just watch out for Dzeko tomorrow. That's all I'm saying. He's in great form. Great movement, and he believes. Would you say that if he wasn't your mate? <laughs> oh, wow. Oh. Probably not. <laughs> Well, look, so much to look forward to tomorrow. As for tonight, the Magnificent Seven stepped up. Raheem Sterling with a superb strike to cap Manchester City's 5-0 win, while in Paris it was the one and only Kylian Mbappe with the dramatic winner for PSG against Real Madrid. And tomorrow the stars are back on show again with Inter Milan, Liverpool and Bayern Munich in action. We'll see you tomorrow. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.